All right, I wanted to show you guys something I set up a while ago that I'm reaping the benefits of now. Uh, it's a really cool idea. If I get my new homestead, I'll definitely be doing this a lot more. I use a lot of leaves, but especially duff, which is the partly broken down leaves, you know, under the surface. And I set this up some years ago when I was out here clearing, and I just put this log here. You can see there's some more over here. In that one, I piled like sticks, you know, branches, trimmings, because I was trimming up all these trees. Uh, and in this one, I just left it so that leaves would accumulate there. Gravity, right? Things move downhill. So if you have leaf fall in an area and there's any kind of obstruction, you can observe this naturally a lot. The leaves will collect and get deep in that spot. So now years later, I have access to this built up duff in here. And I use that for like seed beds, especially you can add it to potting mix or flat mix, especially if you're making your own flat mix and want to get started or just want to augment it. I also get um, microbes because, you know, talk about beneficial bacteria and microbes. This stuff is just teeming with life. So I harvested this last night to use on a bed and we're gonna harvest this part and I'll show you what's up. So I do use leaves quite a bit, you know, but I'm not really after the leaves here. So what I'm gonna do, and I do this on the forest floor all the time. I'll just go to a tree where, you know, the it's been undisturbed for years and I'll just take the leaves off the top <clears throat> like this. So I can just put those back when I'm done. And what I want is this stuff right here. Look how deep that is. That's like three inches deep. And this stuff is great. So I don't mind getting a little bit of dirt, but I'm after mostly the organic matter. Now, some people would say, well, aren't you just stealing nutrients from the forest? Yes, uh, definitely. But it's not as though, you know, new nutrients aren't always being churned up and you have to, put something on your garden. I mean, a garden is like, really works pretty much by adding nutrients and you gotta get the nutrients somewhere. So what are you gonna add and where is it gonna come from? And the main reason I use it is for fine seed beds where I don't wanna mulch with something that's so thick, like say these big leaves, that's gonna prevent the seedlings from coming up. So this makes a really fine covering of organic matter that protects the soil from the rain and watering, because if you water plain mineral soil, like almost every soil, and some are worse than others, will pack down and form a crust. I have a video I'll link here on um, soil crusting, but soil crusting is a major problem because it prevents water from getting into the soil when you water, and it also makes the water leave faster because there's a continuous capillary action uh, you know, between the bottom soil and that crust, and it'll wick away water much quicker. That's why a lot of agricultural systems use cultivation, right? Like breaking up the soil with a hoe or something, because it leaves the top fluffy and actually provides like a dirt mulch that prevents water from getting through that. It'll come up by capillary action through the basic soil structure, and then it kind of, you know, slows way down at that mulch, like dirt mulch surface. So just out of this little spot, I got a full bucket of this stuff. We'll sift that and uh, get what I want out of it. And then you can use the siftings too. And then I'll just cover this back up just to not leave bare soil. And in another three or four years, I can come and harvest this again. Of course, by then I'll be gone but I'll be setting these up for sure, a lot of them, wherever I end up. And I'll put them strategically too. So this is a black oak tree. It drops a lot of nice leaves. And then this is just a good way to get rid of brush, uh, chop and drop, you know, I just make it flat enough that it lays fairly flat. And I, I just pack this full of branches and sticks that are gonna break down much better. You know, if you cut a branch off a tree, and you just throw it down like this one right here, for instance, it's just gonna sit there forever. Whereas here where this madrone tree kind of tipped over and left a little bit of a void here, I just pack those branches in. So the branches that are lower down, you know, there's a few on the top, but at least they're flat, which is better for fire danger and better for rotting. But these down here are gonna break down uh, much quicker. 
And of course that also provides a lot of habitat for, you know, salamanders and rodents and bugs and all kinds of stuff, which uh, in my book is a good thing. Just gonna rub this through a half inch screen, very easy. I think I'll just go throw this on a fruit tree. But normally I would use the siftings, you know, also as mulch just on different things. So you can see, especially if you rub it a lot, you can really get um, most of it broken down into fine pieces. I think I'll throw that on my leak bed. You know, this stuff is fine enough that if you put it on lightly, even really small seedlings like carrots will come through it. Beautiful, amazing uh, bed cover, especially if you use a wide bed system. Uh, so I find it just invaluable. And in some years I'll go through many buckets of this stuff, just collecting it out in the forest. Let's go look at a bed that I just mulched with this. That's going to be seedling apples this year. Uh, for this year's crop of seedling apples for the breeding project. And then this one is all little tiny bulbs. You know, they're probably like average three quarters of an inch of uh, daffodils from my daffodil breeding project. I'll put some pictures up here on the screen of daffodils that I've grown from seed all the way to flowering. But there's probably two or 300 of these tiny bulbs in there. Now, if I mulched them with that, you know, they might be too weak to get, a, you know, a leaves all the way through that. But this stuff, you know, this is only maybe, you know, half inch or less thick and they should be able to push through that really easy. So when I apply it, I just kind of like rub it between my hands or just sort of sift it out like this so it's nice and even. And then watering or rain will kind of even the rest of it out. And that way, no matter how hard it rains right now, I'm not going to get that like massive soil compaction. Before this was just dirt. It's new dirt. You know, I just dug this bed out in the orchard. And if the rains come and it rains really hard here, it's just gonna pulverize that soil. You could think of it as like taking some soil, mixing it with water and breaking up all the structure and then just pouring it out. It's just gonna form this like flat crust. And now I don't have to worry about that for the rest of the year until uh, the cat decides to use it as a litter box or you know, rodents get in here or skunks or whatever, digging for bugs. Great stuff. And I think that's just a really cool system. I'm gonna be experimenting with that more, making some that are maybe a little bit deeper. Steep hillsides, it should work better because leaves do move down steep hills quicker. Again, gravity, things move downhill.